Hey there folks, Santee at the Arizona Ghost Riders here. Got a new gun belt. <laughs> Let's check it out. My uniform for this new job is Old West attire. To complete that picture, I buckle on a gun belt and holster. Although I have a modest collection of gun leather, the cartridge belts are an issue. You see, I walk around a lot, and the one I made that has a full complement of bullet loops gets heavy. I save that for photo shoots or living history mainly. My other old standby is getting pretty worn out, and I keep having to adjust it. Not to mention the bullet loops are stretching out and I am losing dummy bullets. Come on Santee, you do leather work, why not make another one? Well, the one I made took a long time and a lot of leather. After completion I realized it was worth paying a little extra to have someone else make one. So I contacted Jim at River Junction Trade Company and told him I wanted a new gun belt that I could change out the buckle on. He sent me photos of a reproduction hardware store belt that was available during the period. These were mass-produced one-piece gun belts that used a lighter weight leather. Well, that intrigued me. Instead of being sewn, they were laced with leather. That means I can swap out the buckle easily, and when the bullet loops start to wear out, they can be replaced as well. To verify the authenticity of such a rig, I found some other period examples where leather lace was used to repair or resize cartridge belts. Makes sense to me. More research also showed me a belt where rivets were used to secure the bullet loops. Hmm, I'm always learning. You gonna learn. Oh yeah, you gonna learn. The book Packing Iron tells us that starting in the 1870s, cartridge belts were popular for hunters and civilians. Photos from the era back this up. If you entered a town where the carrying of firearms was prohibited, you could drop the rig off at a location where the marshal designated. Although people did it, sneaking a gun in concealed might get you in trouble. He's no gentleman at all. He's a son of a yellow-bellied sow. Now, not all gun leather in the Old West was handmade in a saddle shop. You could order through a catalog or go to a store and get a ready-made, which was more economical. As I've mentioned in other videos, there were different styles of belts. The Ranger belt has a billet and tongue that are sewn onto a longer piece of leather. The Money belt is thinner leather that is folded over and sewn with the sole purpose of holding money or valuables. The Mills belt is made from canvas. This one from River Junction is a plain cartridge belt which is cut out of one piece of leather. It was made popular in Western cinema by Clint Eastwood in Spaghetti Westerns. The original Jim showed was in terrific condition for being 130 years old they were able to reproduce it amazingly well. The belt arrived just in time to begin the work week. Incidentally, it's the first time I've received a belt in a square box, which confused me. Of course, it was all coiled up inside. Duh, Santee. I really got to stop drinking during breakfast. Tell me, has it been a death in your family? This is funny stuff. Wow, is it excellent. The oil-treated leather is soft and the stamping adds some handsome decoration. I was easily able to change out the buckle for my favorite Will Gormley one by untying that leather lace. I'm surprised to find that the belt is much lighter than my other two. Very comfortable for walking up and down a western street all day. Uphill. Both directions. Did I mention the rocks? Yeah. There are rocks. River Junction has different styles of gun belts and holsters to choose from. Some are even antiques. Jim acquires some pretty cool collectibles including accessories, clothing, and period camp supplies. They make hats and gun grips in-house as well. He does research on each historical item he acquires to provide you as much providence as he can. Time to fill up some of these bullet loops and get ready for work. If you're interested in one of the belts or other available styles, I've included a link in the description field below. Well, folks, that's it for another episode. Thanks for watching. Oh, don't forget, we have Patreon. 
for about three dollars a month we're talking about some behind the scenes stuff and some tips and tricks it's kind of fun all right as always please like share and subscribe and we'll see you on down the trail hey thanks to those of you who bought our new t-shirt the pew pew t-shirt if not check it out pew pew We haven't seen Ethan in a while. Hey, how you doing, man? Doing good. How about yourself? I'm doing good. Who's this uh, beautiful beast we have here? This right here. This is Jingles. Hey, Jingles. How you doing? Good? Don't talk much. Hey, have you heard the one? Uh, horse walks into a bar. Over here. It's, I'm telling you a joke, pal. You look the way, though. Horse walks. It's a good joke, Dan. Horse walks into a bar. Bartender says, hey, why the long face? You get it? Huh? Yeah. Face, don't wait. Okay. <laughs> Intro take 25,000.